Thank you. Amen. Okay, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I greet you with the peace of God tonight. Uh, we thank God for his word and his presence and thank God for bringing you here safely as we await those who are on their way. And so uh, we're going to have, we're beginning our, we kind of been dealing with our uh, sort of preparatory, preparatory lessons for the course in the uh, in the book of Ephesians or through the book of Ephesians. I'm calling this, as I stated, for those who are here, I'm going to have to repeat some things for those that are going to be coming on. And because this is a real, this is a real class on the book of Ephesians, I'm going to have to say, we'll, we'll be repeating things. Um, we'll say things in a different way, but for the sake of those who are just, who will be coming in late or will be coming in in different times, but just for the sake of those um, who are, who are what we can call auditory learners, that is, you you learn better by listening. We will repeat. Uh, we will repeat different points, um, and themes and principles. Uh, for those of you that are good at taking notes, and you like to write down a lot, we will also do a lot of um, a lot of repeating some of the principles and points that we have. But also with this class or this course, I want to do a lot of reading. That means I want scripture, I want the scriptures to speak for themselves first. Then we make our comments. So as we're looking at the book of Ephesians, uh, of course, we're not going to be dealing with every verse individually uh, throughout the entire letter because it would just it would take too long. So we're calling this a journey into the fullness of God. We're, we're going to go over this next week again, because this is just kind of the beginning stages, but a journey into the fullness of God. Tonight, we're going to give a kind of an overview, uh, key, key verses throughout the book of Ephesians. We're probably going to do that for a couple of weeks. And then even as we're dealing with the book, we'll, we'll try to do, we'll do our best to grab one chapter a week, <laughs> that's the plan. But of course, there may be things that we'll emphasize more than others. We'll kind of give like an overview of, of, the, of the things that we're dealing with in the book of Ephesians, because you're gonna have themes, you're gonna have principles, you're gonna have points. This really is one of Paul, one of the most powerful letters that, that Paul wrote. It is absolutely, mind-boggling, encouraging beyond words. Uh, this book, the Gospel of John, the book of Psalms for me is it. This is like, this, this, is, uh, this is a letter. This is one of those letters where, where you, we could say it's, it, it's simple in the truth that it presents but it's so deep that there's no bottom to it. So again, that's how we're going to do it. And we're going to learn together as we go along. So if you have questions, my voice is a little strange. So pray for me uh, by his stripes. I believe I'm healed. So we just, we just trust God. So uh, I'm going to repeat a lot of stuff, say, say stuff in different ways. If you have questions, please just unmute. That is, if I'm going too fast and you miss something, just, just unmute and ask me to repeat it. Let questions be with regard to what we are dealing with. Because if not, we'll go off on a on a tangent. And you know me, I'll, I'll grab a ball and then run with it. Uh, we flow with the stream of consciousness. Uh, and then we, we kind of want to come back to our main point. So if you have questions, just unmute and ask. If you need a, a verse or if you need, you, you missed a verse, or if you need something to be restated or stated in a different way or stated again, please, um, please just unmute and ask. 
Again, this is not an exhaustive se session. What I mean by that is like, we obviously we can't cover everything and no teacher, no theologian, no class on Ephesians or any book of the Bible can ever be exhaustive because the word of God is eternal. The word of God is eternal. So no matter how much you cover, there will always be much more to cover. But I hope to give you enough fuel to be able to study on your own. Again, don't be intimidated if you're not a good note taker, or maybe if you struggle reading, whatever the case, whatever the case will be. That's why I want to do a lot of reading for you. And what we what we want to gain from the book of Ephesians, of course, is information. Okay, and I want I want somebody to give this back to me if I say, after I say it. In this book of Ephesians, as we're teaching it, as we're exhorting it, because as we're going through, it's a journey through the book of Ephesians. So there will be teaching, there will be exhorting. Some of it be some of it will be prayer points, uh, exhorting, admonishing, just encouraging. All of this whole book of Ephesians, we are trusting to be faith triggers, hope triggers, encouragement triggers, that anything we deal with shall, that we're praying that it will water your calling, water the seeds of your future, strengthen your spiritual progress wherever you are right now. I'm kind of talking now just to give a, a moment or two for those who are coming on uh, just now. So we want to give information. What, we, what we're going to be involved in this book is there's going to be information we are definitely trusting the Holy Spirit to give us inspiration. And information plus inspiration, that is the light of the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit giving us what only the Holy Spirit can give us. Then we have transformation. And transformation, of course, is change. And, um, and that's what we want, change to your mind, of course, the renew the renewing of your mind, change to your circumstances, change in your bodies, just change across the board. All right. So there we go. All right. So let's pray. Let's believe God. We'll see how far we can get tonight. And again, we'll pick up from here. We'll pick up next week where we leave off. But tonight we're beginning our course and class and session. We're calling it a journey into the fullness of God. And I'll give you the, the, the reference, the, re, the, the reason why I call it that. Uh, the last several weeks, I was calling it maybe an expedition or an excursion. An expedition is a journey that is taken for a particular purpose. Well, we want to explore the territory that God has already given us. So let's just get right into it without any further do So let's pray. Let's believe God. Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. For you sent him to guide us into all truth, and you said thy word, it is truth. Now, Lord, I pray that you would help us to yield to the anointing of the Holy Spirit that teaches us and guides us into all truth. I invoke the presence of the Spirit of truth, that he will bring forth truth with such clarity and precision that they will become handles for our faith. Encouragement today for where, Lord, you are leading us tomorrow. God, I pray that you would allow me to experience the moment of the teacher. Let it not come from me, but through me, I pray. To wit, during the course of this sacred enterprise, this sacred exercise, your people will be challenged, charged, changed, and encouraged. And as I pray, Lord, that the seeds of our future shall be watered, shall be watered. That is, that you are strengthening us today for your assignment for us for tomorrow. So thank you for preparation today for what you have already prepared for us. Thank you, Lord. And then, Lord, um, I pray that you would bring healing, that you would bring deliverance, that you would bring your miracle working way. 
Lord, we, we can do no more than what you enable us to do and what you empower us to do. So I ask of thee grace. And as a people, Lord, we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your power. We acknowledge your mercy and your grace. And in your mercy and your grace, we acknowledge your right to ignore us because of things done, things left undone. But what we are grateful for tonight is your mercy, Lord, and your grace, which brings us close to you, which unites the two parties and you make us one. For he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So therefore, we thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you for your protective custody. We thank you for the covering of your grace and mercy. And so therefore, in the words of your servant, let thy mercy be upon us, O Lord, according as we hope in thee. And as we consecrate ourselves to the study of the sacred page, we give you an advance praise and advance thanksgiving and advance worship for all that shall be wrought among us and perhaps one of the most powerful excursions or classes or studies that we've had on this platform. And so God, I submit myself to you. I resign all natural administration. Have your mighty right away, Lord. And if you would do this and other things, things that are on your people's minds, things that are on the minds and the hearts and the emotions of your sons and daughters, if you would do this and, and more, so many details left out, I promise and we promise not to take any credit for it, but we shall go down from this sign. Glory to God giving you praise and thanks. And we thank you for the power of hope and change and making us agents of change and transformation in these critical times in which we live. I ask this and I pray this in the name of the one by whose stripes we are healed. We speak of Jesus, the very Christ. Amen and amen. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do now, I'm not, I, again, I'm going to repeat this for the sake of those that are just coming on. I'm going to be this class, this journey into the book, uh, into the fullness of God, the book of Ephesians, a journey into the fullness of God. I will say things over and over again in different ways. Again, if you need, if you have a question related to the content of, the, of, of what we're dealing with, just please unmute and ask me, and I know sometimes I have a tendency to move swiftly. So if I go too fast, just unmute and ask me. And if you do have a question and I can answer it, I will do that. If I can't, then I'll I'll tell you that, I, that I'm not sure, but I'll do some research and try to help you out with that. All right, so this is what I wanna do first. We're gonna read. This is the most important thing that we're dealing with. Again, I'm saying this for those we have two types, we have two, uh, well, we have several dimensions of learning that's on the platform. You have auditory learners who, who learn really well by listening and listening to things over and over again. Then you have those who love to take notes. I need to say this again so I can write this down. Uh, give me the phrase or the statement in a different way. Elaborate on it a bit. That's excellent. If you need me to do that, just, just unmute. If you, if you miss a scripture verse, just ask me and I'll give it to you. The most important, one of the most important things we'll do in this session, this class, this course, is the reading. So there's two things that you'll get a deep benefit out of this is reading before you get to the class, uh, to, to the session. And then when we're in the session, I want to read first. At least we're going to deal with a chapter. Tonight is going to be an overview. We're going to just deal, deal with different points and parts. Obviously, it's again, I'm just saying this. I'm repeating this for those who just came on. Obviously, it's not going to be, to be 
an exhaustive study we will never finish. And it can't be verse by verse. Sometimes it will be when it comes to those really, really important issues, but other times it would just be an overview so that we can get a beautiful and concise Generally, this is going to be an overview. We'll emphasize some powerful themes, but it's going to be an overview. And we're going to see all the themes that we've been dealing with for these last months from, from last year into this year. And if you if if I ask and you want to unmute, um, you can do it. Don't feel intimidated, but I may ask a question if you know the if you feel like you know the answer. You can go ahead and uh, unmute and um, you know get get give the answer if I ask. And then also because we're learning together, I may just ask you as I as my custom is to repeat something because when you speak, you reinforce the truth that's already in you. When you speak with your own mouth, um, you 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 reinforce your thinking. You reinforce the renewing of your mind. I'll give you those three things that we are dealing with. We're dealing with information. That's what the minister gives you. We're dealing with inspiration. Now, hopefully our whole session, prayerfully our whole session is inspired. But then those times when the Holy Spirit gets involved and he turns on the light, he quickens you uh, to a notion, to an idea, to a truth. So that's what my prayer is. Information, inspiration. And of course, that leads to transformation. And transformation is change that inward change, that outward change, and then we become agents of change because you can't deal with the power of God's word. This is different from just reading a natural poem. Or, or, or And I, again, I tell you, I love Shakespeare. I love poetry. But it's, it's, it's different than that. Jesus said, six, John 6, 63, the words I speak are spirit and life. Hebrews 4 and 12 says the word of God, King James says, is quick. That's an that's a Elizabethan English, old English, which means to give life to, to give life to. So the so Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 said, the word of God is quick or alive. Man, it's full of divine life, divine vitality piercing even alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. What does that mean? It cuts both ways. It's a good cutting, so don't get nervous. It cuts both ways. Dividing asunder to soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows and is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, that means that before, before we, we, we came to the Lord, our minds and our bodies and our spirits were, were united. Whatever we did, we did because this is what we knew. This is how we live. When we meet, when we meet the Lord in salvation or we start learning the scriptures, all of a sudden we learn, maybe this philosophy I had is not true, or maybe this thought pattern or this speech pattern or this behavior pattern is not true. So now, once your spirit is renewed and quickened, that means once you accept the Lord into your life, a miracle happens. You, you are regenerated. What does that mean? Whatever, whatever was dead and dormant in your spirit, God brings new life to. This is why Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. That word life in the Greek is zao or uh, zoe, and it means the God kind of life or life as God has it. So this is more than bios, which is where we get the word biology, natural life. This is divine life. Now to me, we, we already, I, that's why we're going to do our best. So sometimes I may go fast, but this gets exciting. And I'm telling you, the, the fuse, the fuse has been lit. And so you, to actually think in your mind that the God of the universe, to consider the profound notion that the God of the universe takes his life and, and imparts it unto us. This is what makes us alive on the inside in our spirits. Then the environment of heaven is in us. 
So we can recognize his voice. We can recognize his leading. We can recognize his dealings. That's why Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. The voice of a stranger they will not follow. That's the gospel of John. Why? Because the environment of heaven, the milieu, the substance and the being of God has been imparted to us. Now, this is where the book of Ephesians comes in. The book of Ephesians comes in because this has everything to do with our identification in Christ. You're going to hear me repeat this statement over and over again. And I would say this to trained theologians or to those who have been in ministry for years and years and years, for some longer than we've been alive. This is for uh, pastors or leaders or ministers who know the word of God, because it doesn't matter how much, how much we know or how much we think we know, there is always more to know and more to learn. And when it comes to studying God's word, let me tell you something. The power of a renewed mind is an absolutely unstoppable, irresistible force. And of course, that, that must be an encouragement to us today in the kind of time we're living in. Now, I, I say that maybe with a, with a pause because ever since the fall of humankind, that is the fall of our first mother and father. The, the devil introduced into the human family a rebellious, devilish nature, which has no relationship with God, which can't be tamed or adjusted, but it must be removed and replaced with the nature of God. So though we say we are living in the last days, Paul himself said, well, we're living in the last days. So one, one understanding of the last days, especially in the book of Acts, when Paul was, I'm sorry, when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost and revelation came to him regarding Joel's prophecy that said in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams. And the statement goes on. But the key word is the last days. So when we talk about the last days, it doesn't always mean the last days of the planet. Well, in the book of Acts, it really means the last days that the kingdom of God would be isolated to one nation. That's the Hebrew nation. And this is why Joel prophesied it, that in the last days, I'm a part of my spirit upon all flesh. Do you know what that means? Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see vision. Old men shall dream dreams. Upon my handmaidens, upon my servants in those days, I will pour out of my spirit, a part of my, pour out of my spirit. They shall prophesy. In other words, there's no class distinction. There's no gender distinction. There's no race distinction. All flesh means all flesh. And do you know what that means to us? Uh, no matter what age you are, no matter what race you are, that I can go to God for myself and cultivate and develop and nurture a living relationship with the living man named Jesus Christ. We're not talking about somebody that used to live, brothers and sisters. We're talking about a man that's alive today. And yes, Ephesians, a man that's alive today. Oh, Lord, we, we have to break up the fallow, fallow ground. Did you know it's easier to tear down a building than it is to build up one? Yes. So I want you to get excited about this. This is, this is, well, anyway, let's start, let's start reading. So at least let me get the reading in. So this is an overview today. This is an overview journey into the fullness of God. Ephesians, journey into the fullness of God. And let's begin reading. I'm going to get a chapter read tonight. So even if we don't get much further than that, I want to get the reading in because this is what the Holy Spirit would like. I don't know if you enjoy hearing the word of God spoken, but that's one of the things I love to do and just hearing it. 
will feed your soul, will feed your mind, will feed your spiritual hunger. I'm going to begin with the New King James. This class is going to be dealing with, you know how I deal with, I deal with New King James and King James. And I'm also going to read from the NIV. So I want to read first, the first chapter of Ephesians from the New King James Version. And then I'm going to read it from the NIV. All right, so enjoy this. The Lord, Let the Lord bless you as we hear this. And then we'll make a few references and overviews. And then we'll pray. We'll see how, how far we can get tonight. This is going to be delightful. All right, Ephesians chapter one, beginning with verse one, the New King James Version. Paul, an apostle, and I might stop. I might stop because this is the class. I know I get tempted. So I might make a quick comment, but I want to get through the reading. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, book of Ephesians, chapter one, beginning with verse one. Because I know everyone is not watching me. So I have to remember that some of just listening. All right. So Ephesians chapter one, beginning with verse one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. To the saints. who are in Ephesus. In fact, you know what? I want to I want to do I want to I want to do the King James, not New King James. I'm going to read from the King James and then from the NIV. You'll know why in a minute. So we'll begin with the just with the foundation of King James. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Okay, now, now listen to the flow of the words. Of course, those who, who, who do better listening than reading, just catch the flaw of the words. According as he has chosen us in him, I will make this comment. Whenever you see in him or in whom, this is speaking of Christ. All right. According as he has chosen us in him, meaning Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated un have, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You should underline that. You should just underline that because we are not taught about this enough the good pleasure of his will. I don't know, people of God, if you know that you give God pleasure, <laughs> not because of what you do or because of what you don't do. Of course, that does give God pleasure. But you, you give God pleasure simply on the basis of who you are in Christ and whose you are. Who you are and whose you are. I'm looking at you and I'm looking at the image of God. Oh my, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, verse six, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. That would also refer to Christ. In whom, verse seven, in whom we also in whom we have redemption. Sorry, let me read that again. In whom we have redemption. I want you to notice, notice the tenses. In whom we have, present tense, redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all, all wisdom and prudence. Prudence could mean common sense. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, 
which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Oh my goodness, there's no way we would be able to, 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 to deal with Ephesians in a verse by verse story because this stuff, uh, a commentary, this stuff is delicious. Verse 11, in whom also, you should underline that word also, we have, there you, there's your tense, we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. He's, he's talking about He's talking about Jew and Gentile, Hebrew and Gentile. Because Paul is a Hebrew. He, the, the word came to him. He ministered to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. In whom, verse 13, in whom you also trusted. In whom you also trusted. Talking about the Gentiles now. That means other than the Hebrews whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, good God, after that you believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. I'm, I'm tempted to stop, but this is, this is class. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession Unto the pray unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is his prayer that the God of our Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 17, the Father of glory. Oh my God, we got to do a study on the glory. The father of glory. Did you know he's a father of glory? What is glory? Oh, let, let, me, let me read. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Let me read it again. Verse 17. This is his prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, that's God the Father, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, far above. Listen, each one of these is a class. Far above, far above would be accession. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. What are we dealing with here? And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Whew, easy minister, easy, just read right now. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ooh, can you see all the goosebumps on my arm? All right. Now we got to take our time. You know, I want to, I want to, I don't want to rush through this. So we'll get to where we can get to. Now, I'm going to read this a little quickly, a little, a little quicker um, in, in the NIV. Okay. This is the NIV, Ephesians chapter one. And I'm going to read 
a lot faster. Verse one, beginning in, this is NIV. Okay. Ephesians chapter one, Paul, an apostle of, G, of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Say it again. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. That's a good translation, in his sight. In love, now you see this, there's a little transition because now the period is in his sight. Uh, then, it, then there's a complete statement. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Now with the NIV, you see there's the capital O and the capital L. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made, he, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Verse 11, in him we were also chosen, having been, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also, other than the Hebrew nation, you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed you were marked, I like the word see it. When you believe you were marked, I like that word marked, in him with a seal, the promise, Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance unto the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. That's your future. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the holy people and his in incomparably and his incomparably. That means there's no comparison. Great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right plan, at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. That's you and me, which is his body. We are his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Lord, have mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. 
I know that took a lot of time, but I needed, we needed to do that. We needed to get the reading out. So just in the next couple of minutes, let me just give you a little bit of an overview. I know there's a lot, a lot of time we took make, me making comments and all that, but I'll give you this. This is something I repeated for Sister Edwina last week, but I want to give you this now. We, we Thank you, my over. brother. Yes, Thank you for you. that word. It touched. Thank Amen. You You're welcome. Excellent. That bless you, bless you, bless you for that. You are welcome. Amen. So that encourages me to hear that. All right. So now get this. The first three chapters of the book of Ephesians. Let me just say this. Let me at least give you this because we only have a few minutes left. The book of Ephesians. This is something we stated over the last several weeks. We could call the book of Ephesians the book of the church. Okay. Because you see that repeated over and over again. Now, here comes your encouragement. This has to be a quick overview. Jesus, we are the church who is also the body of Christ. Sometimes in theology, it's called the mystical body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ, because obviously we are not, we are not Jesus's body as he lived on the planet Earth because he has it on, he had his own body. But we are the mystical body the metaphor of fully being Jesus's hands, his arms, his feet, and all the parts of a body, his eyes, his ears, his mouth. He's the head now. We are the body. Now, if he put all things under the body's feet, then you tell me where the works of the devil should be. Where, where's the feet? In the body or in the head? In in the body. Uh, in the, the devil in, should be under our feet. Under well our feet. now, well now, well now, well now, look at here. Now I'm telling you right now, when we as the church get a revelation of this, this, this earth, this generation, every generation needs it. But this generation needs a church, a body who knows who they are because it increases our boldness when we pray, when we call on the power of the Holy Spirit, right in the midst of everything we're, we're listening to on the news because we affect everywhere we go. That's right. So when we look at the news and we see these news, as news about people being you know, randomly attacked and all this division, political, social, economic division, lies and, and death and destruction, all this stuff is happening. Why did God leave the church, the ecclesia, not just the denomination, but the, the living, organic, redeemed community of the people of God? What makes the church that people? in whom God is present. So this book of Ephesians is God's strongest and most powerful philosophic statement to the church. And I've got to use that word philosophy. So if, so if I say anything that seems a little deep, I'll try to simplify it as much as I can, but I don't want to leave it, leave it out. The word philosophy is a compound word which simply means the love of wisdom. Philo means love, Sophia, philosophy. Sophia is where we get the word wisdom from. That's the Greek word for wisdom. So philosophy is the love of wisdom. Well, if you love wisdom, then you also must love knowledge because knowledge is the raw material that wisdom uses. Knowledge is facts. Wisdom is knowing how to use the facts. That's why there's a lot of people who are book smart and they may be intelligent, but there's a difference between intelligence and intellect. Intelligence means I have a whole lot of facts, but intellect will know how to use the facts. See, because it, it goes beyond, it goes beyond the surface, if you will. 
intelligence may know how to evaluate things, but intellect will evaluate the evaluation. We got a revelation here that we just read, but when the Holy Spirit comes into our moment while we're studying, he gives us a revelation of the revelation. Now we can use it. Now we can apply it. And this is why Isaiah 33 verse 6 says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times and the strength of our salvation. So the overview of the book of Ephesians is simply this. You are rich beyond your wildest imaginations. The first part of the book deals with our wealth. Now, if you need me to repeat, I'm going to repeat this in different ways throughout, throughout our course, because this is really important for you to remember. The first part of Ephesians deals with, deals with our wealth. Well, your wealth is what you're worth. Second part deals with our walk. This is, this is the practical application. So the first three chapters, that's why I started by saying the first three chapters of Ephesians forms an, an almost continuous prayer giving the entire letter the sound of music. This is why a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the message and the music or the message and the melody. That's what the book of Ephesians is. Theology with a melody, a liturgical masterpiece. What does that mean? As we read it, there's a give and take. Good God, there's a give and take. I don't know about you, but when I just read it, my mouth, my heart, my soul, is watered, my taste buds are tempted because it's so powerful. And even though Paul is writing this letter from, from prison, Paul's spirit is ecstatic. He is completely blown away, enthusiastic about what this letter is talking about because literally God took his mind and put it in the mind of Paul. And so Paul was transported not just in time, but before the foundation of the world. Ooh, when you find out certain things about your name was called, your purpose was established, your significance and your port importance, your authentication, your official state began before the foundation of the world. Literally before any creative act whatsoever, God was calling your name. You better look out here. This is what the devil's afraid of. The, the, listen, philosophy is about having reasons for what you believe. So when I call it Paul's biggest philosophic statement to the church, this is a statement. The book of Ephesians is a statement so the church can know what it means to be the church. And so the church can be the church not just an organization on the side of the road, sing a few songs, pray a few prayers, and call it a day. Now, nah, one of the reasons why evil is being held back and it doesn't have complete full reign, otherwise everybody will be losing their minds. But let me tell you something, as the church, we have the power, the right, the calling, even the responsibility to pray. When we look at a news, when we look at the news and hear the bad news, don't you just stay there and say, oh God, immediately church member, and I'm not talking about the, 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 the denomination, but church member, what does that mean? Called out one, Phew, that's what you are, called out one. Yes, that's good. that's very good. That's very good. When God when God seals, He does not repeal. Hallelujah! And you know something? He's already ahead of the game because when we get to the sealing, the sealing of the Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about exactly what that means, what the sealing means, what it means to be sealed by the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, as our brother just stated, when when you realize the package you have, 
package of salvation, watch, and the territory that is yours. Mm. Watch now. And the promised land. Oh, buddy boy. Buddy boy. The pro because because the book of Ephesians is like the promised land that God promised the Hebrew nation, first under the leadership of prophet Moses, then Joshua. Moses couldn't take him into the land because the people were too afraid. They forgot what God spoke. They, when, when he told them to spy out the land, watch now, he saw the land, he saw a land, like God promised, flowing with milk and honey. What did that, what did it mean? It was a land that was rich. But then when the 12 spies were sent out, they saw there were squatters on the land. I said, well, wait a minute. If God said that the land is ours, well, what are we going to do with these giants? You know what they started doing? They started comparing themselves with the giants rather than comparing the giants with what God already promised. See, that's our problem. We get a big problem when we start comparing ourselves to the problem rather than comparing the problem to God. That's the book of Ephesians. What does it mean? God has blessed you. That's the key word in Ephesians, verse three, with everything. Oh man, I wish I had time. This is so exciting. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. I'm gonna make this statement because this is important. At least you can meditate on this throughout the week. The fact that he blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, don't let the devil lie to you because the root of every physical blessing is every spiritual blessing because it begins in the spirit world. So don't let the devil tell you that this can't be applied to your body. Yes, it can because every, every means every and every means all and all means all and all means nothing left out. Yes, sir. So just like God, Joshua was able to take the children of Israel into the promised land, God has given us a promised land here. Now, listen to the promise, the giants notwithstanding, appearances and circumstances to the contrary, notwithstanding, but making bold declarations from our hearts and our mouths that belittle the giants and exalt the rhema and the logos word of God. What does that mean? The first part of the book of Ephesians is our wealth. That's your worth. Then our wealth and worth leads to our walk. It deals with what we have to deal with on the job, at school, underneath the ground, in the train, in the sky, walking down the street, in our relationships, dealing with people, dealing with problems. That's the practical aspect. And then the last part of the book deals with our warfare. Yes. That's where the giants come in. But here comes the exciting news. You won before you even enter into the fight. Because when the Bible says in Ephesians 6, so take those three, our wealth, our walk, our warfare. Because when we get to Ephesians chapter 3 and we hear that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we got to go to the verses that go before that. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you, I mean, rather, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I want you to notice the term. We wrestle not against, not we wrestle with, but we wrestle against. Not we wrestle with. God didn't call us to wrestle with demons. We wrestle against. What does against to mean push against? Because we're going forward. We're advancing. We're gaining territory. But those giants notwithstanding, guess what? Because God has already given us the land of Ephesians. Amen. Next week, we're going to have to deal with the, we're going to deal with the will of God. So we just have a minute left, but I'll just give you, I'll just give you this real quick. So just see if you get this much. The first half deals with our wealth, our walk, and then our warfare, okay? We deal, number one, with our covenant. The last part of the book of Ephesians, we deal with the conflict. And then the middle is we deal with our condition. 
So we got our covenant, then we got our condition, and then we got our conflict. But when you know what your covenant is, and I just mean the promise, then you get don't get nervous about your condition. That's your temporary condition on this earth. And then you're ready for the conflict. And what we're going to learn in the book of Ephesians is how to fight, not from your temporary condition, but from your permanent position, we are seated in heavenly places. See, the statement is going to be repeated. You cannot know how to stand unless you know where you are seated. And being seated in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, is your stance and position of absolute and total authorized victory. Your prayer, your prayer life is going to take on a whole new dimension. And you are going to be ready to fight the good fight of faith in a new dimension when we really get into this. I know we spent a lot of time at the reading, but that's really good. So I'll give you a little bit of an overview. So your homework assignment now is to just go through Ephesians, whatever you can read, um, what is familiar to you, at least get the first chapter read. And if you if you do struggle with your reading, that's okay because you heard you the Holy Spirit will help you bring things to your remembrance. And then you heard the reading today. So we're going to make it a point to make sure we get reading in. So we're going to have to use our time wisely because much of the class is going to be reading. All right. Um, so let me just stop here because we're out of time. So this is going to be very exciting. Now, one of the things we read in the first chapter is that he says every time he thinks of the church or the people of Ephesus, because it's probably a whole province and not one single church that the letter of Ephesians was written to. We'll talk about that later, that it was like sent out as an encyclical letter, like to all the churches, not just one church like Philippians, one church like, um, you know, the Corinthian church, but Ephesians was an encyclical letter. It was sent out to everybody. All right. So here's your prayer point. This is, this is, this is how easy it is for God to examine your prayer request, because he already knows it. This is how easy it is for God to answer you just like that. So I want you to know that as we're getting into this, even though we may not immediately address the prayers that's going to be put in the chat, sometimes we will, sometimes we'll just pray for it generally. But you ought to know, you ought to know that when you release it to the prayer chat or right where you are, just in your intimate time, because we're gathered together in his name, you are making that request in the presence of God and the anointing of God. Minister Burley is going to stand in agreement with you. So right now, whether it's a physical issue, emotional, psychological issue, a family issue, a financial issue, or anything else, as I'm speaking this, the Lord is hearing you. And we don't have to give him a lesson in detail because he knows everything. So all you got to do is just give it to God. Even if we gave it to him a thousand times, it's okay. Because God wants us to keep on presenting the thing to him. Not that he didn't hear us the first time, but it's our faith being released. Release. So thank you for my brother, my sister. Thank you for hearing their prayers. Thank you for those that will listen to this later. And the students that will listen to this later. I thank you for taking every prayer request. And in your time, in your timing, in your powerful, miracle-working way, answer the prayer. So what else is there left to do, Lord? But we believe we receive the answer to our prayers, no matter how high or low, no matter how simple or complex. Thank you that you hear our prayer and you grant us your peace until that prayer is manifested one way or the other. So thank you. I believe I receive. We believe we receive in Jesus' name. Now, as we as we leave this platform, I have to be very faithful with the time that we have. So again, I'm already two minutes over the hour. But as we leave this platform, we thank the Lord that we do not leave his presence because he promised to be with us always, even until the end of the age. And in this kind of age we're living, I claim 
and pray the promises of Psalm 91 over your life, over your family, over your existence, your person and your property to protect us from all trouble, harm, and danger seen and unseen. And for those of us who have experienced loss and tragedy in the family, God surround us with his divine miracle work in peace and comfort. And God's gonna make a way out of no way. So we thank God now. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart <clears throat> be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of the one by whose stripes we are healed, we speak of Jesus, the very Christ. Now, I want you to unmute real quick and I want everybody to repeat after me who will. Everybody say, my wealth. My wealth. My wealth. My walk. My walk. My walk. My walk. And my warfare. My warfare. And, my, and, my and, my warfare. Warfare. Amen. and then say this with me. I'm so rich. I'm, I'm so, rich. so rich. I just can't help myself. I just, I just can't, can't help myself. Help myself. Because God already done helped me. <laughs> God, God already, already done, 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 done helped me. Amen. 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 Amen.